Hello and welcome back. This is Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana. Uh, today we're going to be talking about three of the most, probably the most popular, what I would call entry to mid-level range AR-15s. Uh, they're the ones that we sell the most of here in our store and it's probably one of these three that we get the most questions about. So today I'm going to do a, a comparison between the three and an in-depth look at what are some of the differences. Uh, those three AR-15s are the Ruger AR-556, the Smith & Wesson M&P Sport II, and the Springfield Saint. Just to give you a quick idea, the Ruger uh, MSRP is at about $799. The uh, Smith & Wesson M&P Sport II MSRP is about $739. And the Springfield Saint MSRP is about $899. Keep in mind, MSRP is a recommended retail price from the manufacturers. Typically, when you go to gun stores like ours, the prices are going to be well below MSRP, but that'll give you a good indication of the price range between the three. In this video, we're going to start with an unboxing of the three to see what you'll get in each box uh, as you get them brand new. And we'll also go through the technical specs from the muzzle end all the way to the butt end of the rifle, uh, talking very specifically about the three finishes, bores, bolt carrier groups, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and I actually set up a table so we can get a better look at these three and we're going to go through those now and let you take a look. All right guys, we're going to start off with an unboxing of the Smith & Wesson M&P Sport 2 so this way you'll get an idea of when you get this thing brand new exactly what it comes with. Just a reminder, this is listed as the cheapest of the three. Again, MSRP is about $739. You'll usually find these anywhere between about 590 to 650 in most gun stores respectively. Uh, that's uh, as of February 2017. Jumping into this, I'm going to go ahead and open the box. Just a nice standard cardboard box and it does come with a phone line top insert. I'm going to go ahead and move that out of the way and we will reveal your rifle. I'm going to go ahead and take this out here and flip it over. Uh, you do have a chamber flag here so I'm going to go ahead and pull this to the rear and remove that. It is an indication that the firearm is clear. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close that, and then this is our firearm. Of course, it does have the flip sights, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Okay, moving the firearm out of the way, going through the rest of the box contents, I'm going to tilt this up here for you a little bit. Uh, if I remove the second panel here on the bottom, we do reveal all of our uh, instruction manual, warranty information card for you to register the firearm. This is a little magpul. Uh, insert that tells you how to use and adjust your sights. Of course it does come with a firearm safety lock as well as an unopened PMAG uh, generation 2 or an M2 PMAG. And it looks like we get this little uh, AR tool guide, I guess a um, little uh, brochure that has some other products in here that you might be interested if you're into the AR-15. Moving on, we do have now the Ruger AR-556, again kind of the going up in price. Uh, MSRP on these is $799. It's typical that you, that you will find them in more of the $650-ish price range, uh, plus or minus depending on your area, of course, as of February 2017. I'm going to go ahead and rip this one open. It does have a standard cardboard box. We do have a thicker uh, foam top panel. Okay, I'm going to move that out of the way. And here we will find the rifle. We do have a plastic sleeve over the barrel end. I'm going to go ahead and remove the rifle. This also comes with a chamber flag here. I'm going to go ahead and remove that. Check that we are clear. Of course, you do have some Ruger. Uh, this is removable. It's just kind of cl clamped on there, just a little Ruger. Uh, emblem there, I guess, uh, advertising purposes. Okay, and we'll go ahead and set this one to the side here. Okay, you do also have your Ruger uh, instruction manual and your warranty information documentation here in this manual. This one comes also with a PMAG Generation 2, just like the Smith & Wesson did. Okay. Coming on over here, we do have our gun safety lock as well. And this does come with an AR-15 side adjustment tool. Okay, I don't believe there's anything under the phone here. There is not, so that's everything that will come with the AR-556 out of the box. Now moving along to the Springfield Saint. You will notice it does come in a very nice hard case. Definitely an upgrade from the M&P and from the Ruger. 
Uh, really, really nice packaging, really, really nice carry case. It does have metallic latching locks here that we can go ahead and open. Uh, just a reminder, MSRP on these is about $900, but you'll usually find them between about $830 and $950 respectively, uh, depending on your area. Again, that's as of February of 2017. This, as of now, has just released and hit the market, so the prices might be a little bit higher now than they are going to be you know, a couple years from now. Go ahead and open this one up. Inside, you'll find a lot of the same types of contents you found in the others. So we'll start over here with the firearm. Okay, it does come with advertising information here and a nice little red saint uh, rubber band here that you can pull off the front or just cut with scissors. Also has a loaded chamber indicator flag. I'm sorry, not a loaded chamber indicator. It comes with a clear chamber flag, so we'll remove that. It's in there pretty tight. There we go. That was in there pretty tight. I'm going to check. We're clear. I'm going to set that over to the back. This does come with a Generation 3 PMAG. Remember, the others came with a Generation 2, so it's a little bit of an upgrade there. It does come with your um, instruction and warranty information booklet here. Don't believe there's anything under the foam other than a Gun Oil Extreme Duty uh, lubricant uh, little sample packet here. And of course, we do have a gun safety lock just like we saw in the others. Okay, now I do have all three rifles out of the boxes. Again, MP15 Sport here at the top, the Ruger AR556 here in the middle, and the new Springfield Saint here down at the bottom. Uh, now I'm going to start at the barrel end and work my way to the rear and do an in depth difference or comparison between each of these three uh, AR15 platforms. All right, we're going to take a look now at the barrels, just looking in this area here, and I do have you zoomed in. Um, again, Saint here at the bottom, AR-556 in the middle, and then the M&P-15 Sport here on the top. So, the again, Saint is a 1 in 8 twist. The Ruger AR-556 is also a 1 in 8 twist. And the Smith & Wesson M&P Sport 2 travels at a 1 in 9 twist. So the original Sport was also a 1 in 8. Uh, Smith & Wesson decided to go to a 1 and 9 on the Sport 2. Not exactly why they did that. Not exactly sure why they did that, but they did nonetheless. Um, a 1 and 8 or a 1 and 9 twist is really optimal for most of your basic off-the-shelf 5.56 5, or 2.23 2, ammunition, which is going to be usually at about 55 grain. Okay, so that's basically the developers conceived, obviously, that they would, that the potential purchaser would be wanting to use a standard weight ammunition that's most available and the cheapest. Okay, now we've moved up here into the sights. So, all three systems utilize a fixed front post and gas block setup. Basically, you can see AR-15s where this front sight post is gone, you just have a flat gas block. Um, a lot of people, one of their main reasons that they stray away from going with one of these platforms is if you're interested in running an optic, like a long range optic, um, on a 16 inch barrel platform, I, I don't necessarily uh, say that there's a huge uh, use for that, but there are a lot of people who want to do that and that's totally fine. Uh, the front sight base can get in your way if you're not using a riser to elevate your scope, which means you'd also need a cheek riser to elevate your cheek weld to be able to kind of align your eye with that raised up optic. Um, if that's not a concern for you, then that's not really a huge issue. On these three sight bases, uh, of course, the front sight bases on all three are elevation adjustable by raising and lowering the post using, using a sight tool, which we know comes with the Ruger. You do not get one with either of these two. The AR-55, I'm sorry, the M&P-15 Sport were the same, uh, but they can be purchased relatively inexpensively on the internet. Uh, moving down here, you do have, of course, a bayonet lug on all three. Uh, if you're interested in running a bayonet on your firearm, that's more power to you. Uh, that option is there for you. Okay, now we're going to move on back to the handguards. Um, first of all, all of these are a 16-inch barrel, and they utilize these two utilize a carbine-length gas tube. This one actually uses a mid-length gas tube. The same does doesn't really mean a whole lot in terms of performance necessarily. It does give you a shorter profile up here on the barrel other than back here on the, and that's probably out of frame. 
but you do get a little bit of a shorter profile because the side has moved forward just a little bit. Kind of a sleeker look and it gives you a longer handguard uh, and a longer gas tube. Just to give you a little bit more you know, options or a little bit more room to put your hand. So that's kind of cool if that's something you're into. Uh, the handguards in general, uh, these are a, a nylon plastic uh, standard A2 style, not really like a CAR-15, a little bit much thinner actually than what you'd get like on a military rifle. Um, so a lot thinner, a lot lighter, not as bulky, which to some people is a good thing. Obviously I'm sure it's cheaper for them to manufacture, so that's why they throw these on here. Um, easy to replace though. Um, your MNP15 uses a standard delta ring that's under spring tension, so you can just push that to the rear. You probably might need a, a tool to help you with that, but not necessarily uh, a necessity if you don't have one. To pull this to the rear, pop these off, throw on a carbine length quad rail or anything else. Very easy to customize, not a huge deal. Uh, you do get, uh, basically there's really no heat shielding in here, uh, so this could kind of warm up on you, but actually I shot one of these a couple hundred rounds and the heat never really became an issue. Uh, same thing here, same style here, and very easy. Uh, one cool feature, again this is Ruger being a little bit innovative, is they did add a screw, so this delta ring here instead of being under screw tension, I'm sorry, under spring tension, can actually just screw off here. So you can see I can just start unscrewing that. You can unscrew it to the rear, pop your, uh, your forward hand grips off, pop on a, a new set, a quad rail, whatever you want to do. Again, anything standard carbine length um, will just fit right on there and then you're ready to go. So pretty cool, pretty standard, but again, easy to change out if you want. Now the Saint changed things up a little bit. This is a Bravo company or a BCM um, key mod rail. Uh, BCM, this is known as the PKMT rail system that they have. Again, standard delta ring under spring tension. If you want to replace this, you'll have to remove that to the rear. Keep in mind this is now a mid-length handguard, so if you want to replace that, you will need a mid-length. It does use key mod attachment points, which is different from a standard Picatinny or an M-Lock or anything like that. So if you are interested in this, do a little bit, re do a little bit of research on key mod attachment points. Uh, and just make sure that that's something that you're into. Again, it's not going to be a standard Picatinny, and this is not a rail on the top. Uh, this is heat shielded, so you do have nice heat shielding in here, again, to mitigate the risk of this warming up on you. This is a plastic. Uh, it's kind of a, it's a nice sturdy plastic. I'd probably call it a polymer. I'm not too sure exactly what plastic they use, but um, still nice sturdy and a great, a great option, really, if you're getting into the AR-15 market and a firearm under 900 bucks, that's not bad to have on there, so that's pretty cool. So now we're up here into the receiver, uh, let's talk real quick about the finish. The Springfield Saint and the Ruger AR-556 use a Type 3 hard coat anodizing finish. Uh, what that basically means is they use an al aluminum oxide layer that they put over the receiver halves, which allows it to seep into the metal. Then they put it in a sulfuric acid bath for about, I guess, 20 minutes to an hour. That allows the uh, finish, like I said, to seep into the metal and really harden to the metal. Uh, going to give you, it's actually a really good way of uh, giving you a really long lasting finish. It doesn't scratch very easily and is very impervious to corrosion. Uh, it's a type of finish that's mainly used on softer metals and aluminum alloys, which, by the way, uh, that leads us into the construction of these as an aluminum alloy. Same with the MP15 Sport. Uh, the m and 15 Sport, um, Smith & Wesson call, has a different term for it. I actually have it written down. They call it an Armalite finish, and I did some research on what exactly that meant and what I gathered was, and by the way, Smith & Wesson is a little bit secretive of their terminology and about finding information, so I actually kind of had to dig deep into a, uh, the Smith & Wesson forum. I found some people talking about that. It's essentially the same thing. So it's a hard anodized finish. They just, Smith & Wesson just called it something else. Um, per my research, that's not published anywhere by Smith & Wesson. That's just based on a lot of speculation and people who have said they've called uh, and spoken to Smith & Wesson reps who basically confirmed it's the same thing just with a different name that they give it for their own marketing purposes. Now I'm going to talk about the pistol grips and I'm going to start speeding this up a little bit. I think I'm kind of going long on this one. But uh, M&P 15 Sport, standard A2 pistol grip. Nothing really fancy about it, kind of a hard plastic. A2 uh, notches here for your uh, middle finger and your pinky and your ring finger here. 
Uh, here's our Ruger pistol grip. Uh, not really an A2, doesn't have that notch here that we saw in the M&P 15 Sport. Uh, you do have, I'm going to flip this over here, your Ruger trademarks. Again, this is just Ruger kind of uh, stylizing, the, making it a little bit different than everybody else, giving it their kind of Ruger twist on it. And again, putting their logo right down here again. Here we have the Saint. This is a Bravo Company grip. Really, really nice and comfortable with this nice te texturing here. Um, again, uh, one difference is down here on the bottom, there is a trap door which can open and you can put you know different things in here for storage, batteries for your optic, anything else you want, your tactical skittles or whatever. Uh, anyway, that's just a good little feature to have. Why not? Now we're going to take a look at the triggers. Uh, the Saint does have a nickel boron and polished trigger. As you can see, it's kind of shiny and metallic, which you don't typically see on standard uh, AR-15s, which usually utilize the A2 trigger. Um, a nickel boron is a uh, is a, a type of finishing technique. Uh, it's not like using paint or a Duracoat, but it's actually a metallic, uh, what do I want to say, an enzyme, or uh, it's a coating, it's a metallic coating. And again, I'm not a scientist, so please forgive me on that terminology here. But what it basically does is it, as it interferes with other metallic surfaces, because it is a nicely polished metallic surface, essentially, it gives a nicer transition and smoother uh, kind of a transition between the material that it's interfacing with. It basically means it's a lot smoother, moves a lot smoother, uh, more impervious to grime and uh, like carbon buildup as you're shooting the firearm. It's going to make a massive difference, uh, probably not hugely noticeable unless you're putting a lot of rounds through it, um, but definitely still an awesome feature to have and will definitely do nothing but help you in your trigger pull. The Smith & Wesson M&P Sport utilizes a standard uh, GI uh, mil-spec trigger, uh, just a two-stage standard trigger. Uh, pull weight on this is going to be anywhere between about six to eight pounds, um, and uh, there's really no frills or thrills about it. Not much to say other than it's just a standard GI trigger. Uh, now we have the Ruger AR556, again just like the M&P 15 Sport, just a two-stage uh, standard GI trigger, uh, nothing fancy about it. Same kind of trigger you're just going to get in a standard lower parts kit or anything like that. Now we're going to talk about buttstocks. Okay, up here on the top I have the Ruger AR556, M&P Sport 2, and the same. Um, all three utilize a carbine length standard buffer tube, which is mil spec. All three have a six position collapsible stock. Okay. Uh, up here, the Ruger, uh, nothing fancy about it. It is an A2 buttstock. Okay. Same here with the Smith & Wesson uh, M&P 15 Sport 2, just a six position collapsible A2 buttstock. The one nice thing, kind of following the flow of the rest of the Saint, is you do have a uh, really, really nice six position uh, Bravo Company uh, stock. Really, really solid, takes a lot of effort to squeeze in that adjustment tab to be able to push it and collapse it. And it's in position, it has a really nice firm hold on it. Again, really, really nice addition and definitely a really, really nice stock. A little bit wider cheek belt here for you, just a really overall comfortable feel. Now we're going to talk about the sights. Here we have the Springfield Saint. It does come with a flip and locking rear sight. So I do have to push a button on the other side to unlock it, to fold it. But if I want to raise the sight, all I need to do is grab it and pull it up and it locks and clicks into place. On this side, we do have a windage adjustable knob, uh, which you can obviously turn left or right to bring your windage left or right. Of course, your elevation is adjusted on the front post. Uh, this is a Springfield made sight. On the back, and try and get this in camera here for you. Uh, we do have notches along the bottom for your uh, windage adjustments. And we also have a 100 yard and a 200 yard uh, sight aperture. Uh, ghost ring sight or peep sight is what I should say. You have a wider aperture here and a smaller aperture sight here. Okay, here I do have the Smith & Wesson M&P 15 Sport 2. These also have a folding sight. Folded to the rear, it locks into place. I can push on a tab here to raise my sights or there is a tab on either side I can depress to raise my sights as well. I do have a windage adjust, adjustment knob here, which changes your windage adjustments. Uh, obviously, your elevation is controlled by raising and lowering the front post. On the back, 
I do have notches down here for gauging my uh, windage adjustments. Also, this aperture here, and I'm going to try and do this kind of stiff. There we go. So this aperture, as you can see, that can fold down out of the way, giving you a larger aperture if that's folded down, or I can close it, giving myself a smaller aperture. Uh, these are Imbus sights made by Magpul. Here on the Ruger, I also have a flip sight. I can fold that down and lock into place. There is a button on this side that I push to raise my sights. This is a Ruger made sight. It does have windage adjustment knob here and notches on the rear to mark my windage adjustments. Of course, elevation is changed on the front post. Now we're finally going to end up on the bolt carrier groups. I have the Saint here, the Ruger AR556 here in the middle. And I have the Smith & Wesson M&P 15 Sport Bolt Carrier Group on the top. Starting down here with the Saint, uh, you do have a really nice M uh, Springfield, uh, or, I'm sorry, a Springfield Armory logo here, which you will see through the ejection port when the bolt is closed. Just a nice touch. This is an M16 Bolt Carrier Group. Now, see people say, why do you want an M16 Bolt Carrier Group and a semi-automatic AR-15? Well, an M16 Bolt Carrier, carrier Group is a little bit heavier. So you do get a nicer uh, transition and movement. That extra weight helps uh, drive through debris and, and uh, carbon buildup in the receiver, giving you a little bit of that extra reliability. Um, these are not M16 bolt carrier groups. In fact, you can see some of uh, Ruger's uh, stylizing, kind of these uh, squared off edges here on the bolt carrier group, kind of just a little touch that Ruger added. And of course, the MMP15 uh, Sport 2 is just your standard no frills, no thrills, bolt carrier group. Now, now the Springfield Saint and the Ruger AR556 bolt carrier groups are magnet particle inspected. That is nice because a uh, mag magnet particle inspection, I'll basically go over that briefly, not to get too technical, but it is a form of inspection of a metal part in which a electric current called a flux is put through the part. And the flux, what it does is if there's any imperfections such as cracks or imperfections that are not visible to the eye, um, the current will arc around that imperfection and it will create sort of an iron dust uh, that builds up, which is kind of like a colored dust that will build up around the imperfection, which will then become visible to the person inspecting it. So if that were to happen here around the rear, I would know that there was an imperfection in the metal and I can either fix it or I cannot use the part. Just a nice added test just to kind of give to the overall rigidity. We know that if it passes the inspection that there's no microscopic imperfections uh, found inside the bolt carrier group. Um, I don't know if Smith & Wesson bolt carrier groups undergo the same test. I looked and I could not find that answer. So if you know that answer, go ahead and put that in the comments. Coming up here to the M&P 15 Sport 2 BCG as well as the uh, BCG, the AR556. They are chrome plated. That would be the uh, bolt carriers, the bolts, and the firing pins. Again, any type of chrome plating or chrome lining will increase the uh, overall resistance to corrosion, uh, which could start to build up inside your firearm. I searched. I'm not too sure if the Springfield Armory is also chrome plated or, or chrome lined. Um, again, if anybody knows that, please put that in the comment section. I would appreciate it. Well, that's about it. Uh, thank you all for checking in with us. Uh, hopefully that answered a lot of questions and will make it a little bit easier for you to make that decision if exactly which home will fit into your needs uh, as you get into your first, maybe your first AR-15, or if not your first, maybe your second AR-15. Uh, anyway, if you have any questions, please reach out to us on Facebook or through YouTube. We'd be happy to answer them. Or if there's anything I left out, please just let me know and maybe I can touch on it in another video. Thank you for watching and please stay tuned for more.